When it comes to managing an investment portfolio, one of the most important features, one of the most important considerations that you can have is what's called an investment horizon. And this is quite a misunderstood concept of building and managing a portfolio in the first place. And this is particularly true when it comes to retirement. A lot of people are under the impression that the day you retire, your portfolio is gonna change. You're gonna change from the risk assets, the growth, the building the portfolio, to a conservative standpoint. And nothing could really be further from the truth. Investment asset allocation and how you manage your portfolio is an evolution. Certainly, uh, if you're talking to a 30 year old and you, who's not retired, assuming, and you're talking to a 60 or 70 year old who is retired, you're going to see a difference in the makeup or the difference in the allocation and the risk profile. Um, but when you retire, it doesn't automatically change on day one. In fact, in most cases, it's a decade long process of switching or changing from that more aggressive growth oriented stance into a more conservative one. That said, even when you do retire, it is important that you have a core to your portfolio. If you're going to be uh, an equity investor, if you're going to have uh, an element of risk in your investment assets, you want to have a, some core holdings that you can rely on that are dependable and you want to build out from around that. Some of the most important criteria that I think are important when it comes to investing are things like you definitely want to have some income. So when you're in retirement, you want to have some yield. Typically that comes from dividends in an equity portfolio, but you also want to marry that so you have an element of growth that goes along with that. So it's kind of that, that blend of the yield and the growth. Really importantly, you want to have stability. Again, not necessarily your entire portfolio, but the core of that portfolio, you want to have it stable so that you can rely on it to provide, hopefully, for decades of income in retirement. Another measurement that I think is important when you're looking at retirement income or a retirement portfolio is what's called beta. And so beta is just a statistical measurement of how volatile your holdings are compared to uh, a particular index. So we're Canadians here. Let's just uh, use the Toronto Stock Exchange as an example. You can measure the beta of your whole portfolio. Is it more volatile or less volatile than the index in general? Uh, if you're 30 years old, probably uh, you want to have it as volatile or perhaps even a little bit more volatile, allowing for some extra opportunity for growth. However, once you're in your retirement years, you typically want to have a portfolio or individual securities that have a beta that is under uh, the index just so that you can uh, it's giving you more predictable income more predictable uh, balances of your portfolio in your retirement years i would also add to that that you want to be uh, have most of your investments the core of your holdings in industries that are stable so industries that have proven in the past that they can produce ongoing general revenue. And we think of these more sort of the consumer staple type products, the financials, et cetera, uh, as opposed to um, some of the newer technologies or the out outliers. Now, quick word on that. Um, I worked with many clients when I was working directly with clients who um, had, you know, were in their 60s, 70s, or even 80s, who had that penchant for a higher level of risk. And so they, they would take, they would have a percentage of their portfolio that were in some of the newer growth oriented companies. There's nothing wrong with that. If you have an itch if, for that, if you have a desire to hold those, uh, I, I think absolutely go for it. But we're talking here about the core the stable, the, the, the most important part of your portfolio in those years. In today's video, I'm going to highlight, which I believe is one of the most stable, most income generating, uh, a very suitable holding for many people who would be in their retirement years. And a quick note, everybody's a little bit different. And I can't say to you, this is a good company for you because I don't know what your risk tolerances are. I don't know your whole financial situation. So um, this is a starting point. It's a company we're going to talk about that may pique your interest and you may want to look more uh, into it. If that's the case, awesome. But don't just take this as a blanket recommendation to go out and buy this company because again, I don't know uh, your profile and whether this would be suitable for you. Before I get into the nuts and the bolts of this company, I would like to point out the first link in the description below is for our investing academy. The company I'm going to talk about today is Power Corporation of Canada and this is a Canadian company ticker is POW currently trading at around $39 Canadian and the company has a market cap of $26.6 billion. Now Power Corp is predominantly a financial services company and they really have a simplified business model where they have two main distribution channels being groups 
and advisor driven. They have essentially three product offerings. So they have the accumulation type assets. So building your assets, investing, managing portfolios. They have their decumulation phase, which is where you get to once you've built up the assets and you now start taking money out, whether it's through pension plans, that type of thing. And they have exposure to the insurance industry as well. They have operations in Canada, Europe, and in the US. If we drill down a little bit deeper into the specifics, Power Corp is a holding company and they are a majority shareholder of Great West Life. They are also a majority shareholder of IGM Financial. Now that's a company you may not be familiar with, but you certainly will be familiar with what uh, IGM, what the company itself owns. Also, they are a shareholder of GBL, which is a company you're probably not familiar with, but we'll have a closer look at that in just a moment here. Those are their publicly traded companies that they own shares of. They also have ownership in private companies such as Sagard, Power Sustainable, and China AMC. Of the three publicly traded companies that they own, let's take a closer look at what each of those do, starting with Great West Life Co. Most Canadians will be familiar with this company. They have about $2.3 trillion in assets under administration. And as far as where they earn their money, the biggest chunk of their base earnings come from Canada, about 37% overall. And of course, they have a large exposure in life insurance. They have segregated funds. They have group life and health insurance. And of course, they're big in the group retirement service as well. They have the Canada Life banner that they operate with. About 21% of their earnings come from the US and they have a exposure to Empower, personal capital, and investors may be familiar with the Putnam Investment brand, which is large down in the United States of America. About 25% of their earnings come from Europe, big stakeholders in Canada Life and in Irish Life. And then they have about 17% of their earnings that come from what they call their capital and risk solutions. And generally this falls under the Canada Life reinsurance banner. Moving on to IGM, most people will recognize this as what used to be called Investors Group. So IG Wealth Management, as it's now called, along with Investment Planning Council, make up about 56% of their net earnings under the Asset Management category. Many of you will be familiar with the McKenzie brand. They own that and they bring in about 25% of their adjusted net earnings. And then they do have, as I mentioned just a while ago, these strategic investments in these other private companies such as Great West, North Leaf, China AMC, and Wealth Simple. They currently have about a million clients under the IG Wealth Management banner, and they have a pipeline of about 30,000 external advisors. And these are advisors who uh, pro provide this pipeline where they work directly with clients one-on-one -on -one, and they recommend the McKenzie brand of funds. The third major investment they have in public traded companies is in GBL. Now this is a Belgium company and it's essentially, it is an investor in Europe. It's an investment company that holds a variety of investments and most of us will be familiar, the, the number one company that they're, we would be familiar with that they own shares in is Adidas, of course. They also have a stake in Siena, which is a money management company with a number of external fund managers. They have direct investments and co-investments. And then in their private asset division, which is about 11% of their revenues, they own directly shares of private companies that we wouldn't be available to the average person. One of the things that I think really situates this company well for presently, but also for the future, is that they are a mix of the traditional money management style, but also they're being more proactive and they're moving more into um, the type of investment products that would appeal more to the uh, to the younger crowd. For example, they own Wealth Simple, and most people here on the channel would be familiar with Wealth Simple's investments, with the you know the exposure they have to the financials, to their tax services. They also have an investment in Coho, which is a, a Canadian fintech company. Again, really tailored to the young generation. So I think this really bodes well for the company as they are making sure that they're looking after you know the the more traditional assets or the fee generating assets. Uh, and then also the more more new innovative platforms that are coming on as line. They're really being a visionary when it comes to that perspective, in, in my opinion. Now, speaking of recurring revenues, when we look at the assets that they have that generate this recurring income, it might be hard to imagine in this day and age, but their base management fees of their products range from 0.75% to 2.25%. And even though we think the days of fees are long behind us, the majority of money out there still is managed on a fee-based basis. And so uh, that's something that the company has a large exposure to. So it bodes well there. From an asset under management perspective, you can see significant growth year over year from 2020 
to 2021. Another feature that I really like about PowerCorp is their exposure to alternative asset management. So these are typically the private type companies that you can't just go on the stock exchange and buy. And as an individual investor, um, really there's limited access unless you have a lot of money. Um, most investors don't have access to this. So if you work with a company like this that has exposure to those things, it's almost like it's it's more of a pension style management uh, where you have, um, you know, if you look at most private or most pension plans around the world, they have, because of the volume of money that they manage, they have exposure to these private investments. And a couple of examples, if we look at the, the Great West Life brand here, they have a limited partnership exposure in the Power Sustainable Energy Infrastructure Partnership. And those are things that you couldn't go out and buy as an individual investor. They also are invested in Northleaf, just as an example of the type of companies and the access that they have. Northleaf Capital Partners is a global private markets investment firm with about $19 billion in private equity. And examples of their types of investments are private credit, and infrastructure. I do want to shift my attention over to the financials of this company. Uh, just as a quick reminder, I'm looking at a snapshot today, but I'm not looking at necessarily uh, meaning you need to rush out and buy Power Corp today. Although I do think it is a good buy at the moment. Uh, but that said, I'm looking at a type of investment that in your retirement years or even leading up to retirement, quite frankly, it's a company that you can own comfortably. Um, so think of this more as a long-term investment. So when I look at the financials, it'll give you a, a snapshot of where we are today, a little bit of history over the company as well. Uh, but keep that in mind when you're formulating the uh, whether this is an appropriate investment for you as well. Before I dive in there, I would like to take a moment and thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Passive. Now you can use Passive to manage your investments more efficiently. It's super easy to keep track of your holdings and see whether you are over under your target allocations. And then when it's time to rebalance, you can use Passive's one-click trade feature. And this takes your portfolio, it analyzes how accurately you're aligned to your allocation targets, then it automatically does all the math for you and it builds the trade sheet showing you what you need to do to get back to your intended portfolio balance. From the reporting dashboard, you can keep track of your total value over time. A really good feature is keeping track of your dividends, the sources, how much they're bringing in, where those are coming from. You can review your transaction history for with trades, dividends, contributions, any other type of account activities. If you are looking for help with keeping track of your investments and uh, looking at the portfolio from the top down and, and making sure you're on track with your objectives, I would invite you to check out this platform, Passive, which is available if you click on the first link in the description below. Now let's move on to the revenues of Power Corporation of Canada. So if we look at current revenues, they're bringing in about $70 billion a year in gross revenues. Net income in the last 12 months is just shy of $3 billion. When we look at the revenues from a growth perspective, over the past five years, the company has grown those revenues at about 6.5%. Looking at their dividends, the company is currently paying a dividend of 49.5 cents per quarter, and that equates to a dividend yield currently of about 5%. Now that is below their five-year average of 7.65%. From a payout ratio perspective, very comfortable 42.5% payout ratio. Looking at their debt, the company has about $19.5 billion of total debt. The bulk of that, almost $17 billion coming from long-term debt, and from a credit rating perspective, if you look at the S&P ratings, the DBRS limited ratings, you will see both have them listed at stable with senior debt of A or A plus and the preferred shares also with a very high credit rating. I did speak earlier about the importance of measuring the beta of a company uh, versus the index, especially important when you're looking at a retirement portfolio to make sure that you have a, a reasonably stable uh, rate of return. And in this case, if we look at the beta of Power Corporation where it is today, it's, it's trading at a beta of 0.52, which basically means it's about half as well as the TSX as a whole. And when you look back over the last number of years, in most market condition, it's trading under that beta of one. There was a quite an anomaly, of course, during the COVID crisis when everything popped up there. But for the most part, you would expect that this company would operate at a level of volatility that is lower than the Toronto Stock Exchange overall. When we look at the current valuation of the company, and again, this is current numbers, but we're looking here at a long-term holding, but they do have a price to earnings ratio currently of 9.3. Now we can compare that against their five-year average of 13.31. And that indicates that there may be some uh, value here, trading at a little bit of an undervaluation, if you will. The sector itself trades with a PE of 10.71. When we look at the price to book ratio, 1.1 times right now, again, lower than their five-year average of 1.26. 
and lower than the sector average of 1.25. When you're looking at a core holding for a portfolio, for a retirement portfolio, again, you wanna look at something that is stable. You typically wanna look at something that is gonna be paying you um, some dividends with a potential for growth. You're gonna look at something, of course, most importantly, that is secure and is gonna be around because hopefully you're gonna be retired for years and years or decades and decades, and you want something that is gonna be there providing that revenue for you, providing that income during those retirement years um, as long as you possibly can. Uh, the first link in this video below is for our investing academy. As I mentioned, I would invite you to um, have a look there and I would thank you for watching the video and I always enjoy doing these. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.